This is the Fayette County Amateur Radio Club repeater site tour. We'll begin our tour by turning off of Ellis Road, heading on the dirt road past the big water tower, right to the base of the 300-foot repeater tower. Hi, I'm Joe Domaleski, KI4ASK with the Fayette County Amateur Radio Club. There are currently four repeaters located at the Ellis Road site. Our VHF Main Club repeater, the Skywarn Hub repeater, an Aries D-Star repeater on Reflector 30 Bravo, and a VHF Packet Digipeater. Okay, so if you go up and look at the tower, everything on the right side of the tower is the, the uh, club repeaters and the 444-600. Awesome, thanks. We're with David Benoist, AG4ZR. David, tell us about the 521 repeater. Well, this is the uh, 521 repeater. It is a, a Motorola uh, repeater that we have converted and uh, is connected to its control mechanism over here. This is the controller for the 521 repeater right here. And if you look right up here, these are the duplexers for 521. This is what separates the receiver and the transmitter so that they can use a common antenna. And I'm here with Robert Burton, KD4 YDC. Tell us about the 4446 repeater, Robert. All right, so this is uh, the 444-600 repeater. It's kind of a mess of wires, but we've got, we're, we're running a GE Master 2 converted. Uh, we run a lot of fans on the repeater because of, of the, the intensity of the repeater usage of it. Uh, literally about maybe eight or so fans. We've got also, uh, for the remote base, for the VHF UHF remote base, we use a TMG 707 Kenwood. Uh, we also have a 220 linking uh, system as well. Uh, here's our uh, big honking power supply for the repeater, and then we've got a 20 amp, uh, a 35 amp rather, for uh, running the remote bases and such along with, with the duplexers. But one of the things that's unique, uh, or really that we've got to have with the repeater system, is this type of, of grounding. So everything has what you might call the blitz bug on every one of the uh, every one of the uh, antennas coming down. And all the ones that are connected with the 521 and the 444-600 are, are the ones with the red tags. Um, we've got the uh, grounding system here. There's also another grounding, grounding system outside and then right uh, every uh, 20 feet or so, I believe it's grounded to the tower. So grounded to the hill, especially since you have antennas up at 300 feet. So uh, that's uh, something that's required really at this setup. All right, David, AG4ZR, tell us about the D-Star repeater and the Digipeater. Well, as you know, most D-Star repeaters to really be able to do something effectively need to be connected to the internet. Well, our internet connection uses a hotspot, and if you look up here, you see a little highly directional antenna. It's a cellular antenna, and it comes over here, it comes down here, and is connected up to this Sprint hotspot. And um, we have this connected up to a little power supply on here. It comes on about every hour and a half on a timer so that it keeps the battery charged in here. Over here we have a Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi is connected actually to the D-Star repeater down here on this computer. But this little guy is also Wi-Fi connected to the hotspot. Kind of a jerry rig, but works very well. It's worked very reliably for us. Uh, over time we have made some special modifications to this that uh, keep it resilient. Uh, we have it automatically keep an eye on the connection to the internet. If that connection tends to fail, it tries to take some action to recover that connection. And uh, most of the time that works pretty well. Down here we have, this is the actual D-Star repeater. This is the controller. This is the actual repeater itself. And then this computer is uh, connected to this controller right here. And also the internet connection that you saw up here. Now, down here, these are the 400 megahertz duplexers. They're kind of like the uh, duplexer for 521. They separate the receive signal from the uh, transmit signal uh, to, again, a common antenna. The antenna is at about 250 feet. So, uh, 
that comes up. Uh, it's all connected up to uh, one of the cables that goes over here that Robert showed earlier. It goes up to the uh, 250 foot level. Now we have a digipeter too here, right? Uh, that's right. Over here, this was uh, put in by Brian, W-A-B-Y-H. Uh, it's a little FT-1500 Yezu connected up to a KPC-3. It just said there's a little program in the KPC-3 that uh, runs the radio. It comes up and uh, reacts to a query and just passes uh, digital traffic. Uh, this is the back of the uh, 521 repeater. It's a Motorola MSR2000. See the power supply here. This is the PA, the receiver, and the transmitter driver are down here in this location. And uh, this is the control right here that comes from the controller in the cabinet. So Robert, tell us what happens when the power goes out of this building. All right, so we have a uh, diesel generator, big honking diesel generator. We have also got a very large uh, UPS inside as well. Robert, tell us about the feed line and the grounding. Okay, as mentioned before, that we've got, there's a grounding block that's not only on the inside, but we've got one on the outside too. So if you look up at the coax cable, it's pretty much how a grounding kit on uh, cell phone towers, communications towers works. They actually strip back the, uh, the plastic on the hard line and then they direct connect to the wiring to the, uh, the shield and then they have it sealed back. It's pretty big honking tape and, and such, waterproof tape. This is actually, it's kind of corroded, but you can kind of see that this is, this is actually copper tape. And, and this goes down, way down into the ground to uh, some nice big honking um, ground rods as well. Everything at this tower site, you can see, actually is bonded together on every single, uh, every single leg is bonded into the ground and bonded in, and even over here, this is what, uh, this is bonding from way on up the tower. You've got another, every so often, you've got another grounding block that comes down and that is also grounded into uh, the, the, the ground rods that are put into the ground. And then, of course, they're all uh, bonded together as well. That concludes our tour of the Ellis Road Repeater site. Thank you for watching. For more information about the Fayette County Amateur Radio Club, please check out our website at kk4gq.org. We're also on Facebook, KK4GQ, and we have a weekly club net on our main club, VHF Repeater, linked also to the Skywarn Hub Repeater. On behalf of David Benoist, AG4ZR, Robert Burton, KD4YDC, I am Joe Domaleski, KI4ASK. Thank you for watching.